Hello everyone, this is Balaji Kaya signing in for Brain Smart Labs. In my previous session, as it was going lengthy, I had to cut it short and deliberately miss a few important things. Well, in our today's class, let us first look into these topics and then move on to today's topic, command line arguments. Come on, we have no time to waste. Let us quickly jump into what we did in our previous session. In our previous session, understanding literals and operators, we saw literals in Java can be classified into five types. That is A, integer literal, B, floating point literal, C, boolean literal, D, character literal, and E, string literal. We saw the representation of various integer literals in Java. That is A, decimal integer literals, B, octal integer literals, and C, hexadecimal integer literals. In floating point literals, we understood Java supports both standard notation and scientific notation for representing floating point numbers. We then saw a brief on boolean literals, character literals and string literals which play a vital role in any Java program. In the program escape sequence demo.java, we demonstrated you the importance of escape sequences which made us understand various escape sequences present in Java. We then jumped to an all new building block that is operators where we saw a arithmetic operators, b unary arithmetic operators, c relational operators, d logical operators, e increment and decrement operators and f bitwise operators all in one single session. We saw the use of ternary operators and concluded our previous session with this topic. Well, in our previous topic, we had two more important operators to discuss on, which were completely related to OOPs, that is instance of operator and new operator. Instance of operator is used to obtain runtime information of an object, and our new keyword helps us to create a new object every single time we use it. Both instance of and new are keywords in Java. More about it, I will be teaching you when I am teaching you OOPs. Till then, wasi tadkali. Yesterday, we also missed a very, very important industry standard that you all need to know while using operators. Industry standards. The standard that you need to keep in mind while using operators is to make it look neat and clean by using proper spacing. You mean spacebar spacing? Where? <laughs> Take a look. A statement that says A is equal to B must have space both on the left of our assignment operator and to the right of our assignment operator. Likewise, in a statement which does addition operation, we have a space here, here, here and here that is space on both sides where you have an operator symbol. The convention not just applies for addition operation, but for any operation you perform in Java. But dude, what about our urinary operators? Le, ad urinary operator so, yalla vanda ya, tad sama tad bawa, yalla patan. Karma, what in urinary operators? Urinary operators always have two two symbols, right? Even in logical operators. Now where to give space there? Good question. Now listen to me carefully. While performing any operation using urinary operators always use a space to the operator's left and to its right, but not to its center. Remember, the two symbols used in our unary operation acts as a single unit. Please use your brain before adding any space anywhere. Likewise, in the below logical expression, we have to use a space here, 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 here and here. And for heaven's sake, no space over here and here as these operators act as a single unit. Industry standard conventions are very important when you are inside this corporate world. In companies, your code will be kept running for years together and your code will be prone to modifications as the client requirement changes. Tomorrow, if no one can understand your code what you have written, it will be a huge loss for the company as they have to shell out more money on maintenance hours. The only way they can save money over here is by including certain standards on every developer they have in their company. Conventions I teach you must be in your blood before you set foot into any software company today. Mind it. Command line arguments in Java There is one more thing I missed saying in my previous class. You might have noticed that I stress on a few topics two or three times, but for the other topics I take it very lightly and won't stress it again and again. 
Reason being, these topics will come to you on the fly by doing more and more programs prescribed in my curriculum. Topics like literals and operators, I just finished both the topics in one single session. Whereas topics like arrays and data types, I took one whole session to explain it to you in detail. Still many topics like multidimensional arrays, unary logical operators are kept pending, but I deliberately skip those topics. If you ask me why, it is for you to gel with the subject. I am not here to just complete the syllabus and run away. When you have accepted me as your teacher, it's my responsibility to make everyone understand every bit of the subject. Believe it or not, each video is costing me somewhere around 90,000 rupees, but I am not keeping that into consideration. Education for me is not business. Education for me is education. Oh, really? I am here to educate, and the reason for me to stay on screen should serve its purpose, no matter what it takes. That is correct. If I am spending all my hard earned money and resources over here, I can ask you one small thing in return dedication. Please maintain proper notes and practice all programs I teach before entering the next class. If you still don't want to listen to my words and show least importance for what I am telling, what's the point in making all these videos? It is just Gorkalla Mele Malasurudanta Sarvagnya. That's it. Kaliak Yogita Ror Kalita Re, Yogita Ror Pitta Re, Video Dal Ladre, Institute Dal Ladre, Kalibe Kunti Dre, Yalana Kalita Re, Adak Nan and Manakagata. Moving on, let us continue with our next topic Command Line Arguments. Command Line Arguments in Java. Well, you all know how we used to do arithmetic operations before. That is, declare int a is equal to 5, declare int b is equal to 6, and finally say int c is equal to a plus b. In this style of coding, the values in your program are coming from the program itself, and here, user has no role to play. Such programming techniques in industry today are called hard coding techniques. Well, in this class, I'll be teaching you how to take inputs directly from the user. Welcome to the world of command line arguments. In my computer, go to D drive, workspace, and then go to our basic examples folder. Create a new folder by name 06 command line. And here, create a new program by name command line demo 1.java. Right click the file and edit the same using edit plus. Now type the program with line to line and letter to letter accuracy. Notice in line number 3, we have written our main method and there we have declared a string array bearing name arcs. Have you ever thought what is it while coding any of your programs? Satya vaglu illa guru, yochne kuda madila. The array arcs parameter that we declare in our main method helps us to retrieve the input values from the users in the form of string literals. Now in this program, I want to display three input values using the three SOP statements. I also have a logic written to concatenate these string inputs and to display it as an output. All I need to do is compile the file using the command control1. But please, do not run the program here by any chance. Do not run? But why? We are just compiling the file here because once we compile the file, we will be getting a dot class file in the same folder where our source code is present. Now in our command prompt, if we go to the same location where our dot class file is present, we can run the file with very little effort. To pass the input arguments to our program, all we need is to type java space class name space ring space ringa space roses. Make sure you have given space here, here, here and here. Press enter to run the program and kaboom. Now there is the output of the program, whose input is supplied real time by the user with no hard coding. Come on, let us try one more time. In command prompt window type java space class name space ding space dong space bell. Make sure you have given enough space here, here, here and here. Press enter to run the program and kaboom. We have got a totally different output this time for the new set of inputs we have provided. Wow dude, that's simply amazing. It's just like a scan of statement in C language. Simply wow. Wow. So to understand this topic, I need to first learn arrays what you have thought. 
Hmm, interesting. You are absolutely right. Without understanding arrays, you cannot understand head and tail of what is command line arguments. Wait, as you have reminded me arrays, I have a tricky question for you. Ready for the challenge? Yes. Tricky question. In our previous example, what might happen when we supply two values in our command line instead of three? State the reason why. What did you say? I didn't get you. In this example, what will happen to our output if we pass only two values as our input? For example, um, let's see. Yeah, Nimpenda. Our question is, the moment you press enter, what will happen and why? Wait, let me analyze the program first. Oh, really? There are three SOP statements, each accessing 0th index, 1st index and 2nd index of our args array. When we tried the same program with our previous inputs ring ringa roses, ring appeared for 0th index, ringa appeared for 1st index and roses appeared for 2nd index. So in this example, if we type nin pinda and press enter, nin will appear for the 0th index, pinda will appear for the 1st index. Wait, wait, wait. Nothing is there for the 2nd index, but we are trying to access that in our program. Dude, 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 it's array index out of bound exception. Reason is we have accessed the second index in the program, which does not exist as we have passed only two inputs. Bravo! Bravo! You are right. When we pass only two inputs, an array of size 2 will be passed to the main method during runtime. We all know that array of size 2 does not have index bearing 2. And so, we get a runtime exception stating array index out of bound exception as we used index 2. So always pass the required amount of values through command line arguments as defined in your program. Sending more number of values will not create any problem as it will not be used anywhere. But sending less number of values will create a problem as it creates a runtime exception because the program is trying to use the index which does not exist. Dude. In this program, we are sending strings and printing strings. That's okay. What if we need to do any addition operation? How can we add two numbers if they are strings? Now that's really a good question. You will get the answer in our next program. You know what? I will not show you how to execute this program. It's good you only try out all by yourself. This shows the actual strength on how much you have understood the concept. Once you do this program, it will make you feel proud of yourself. Now note it down. Do it yourself. Command Line Addition Program Type this program on your PC understanding each line of the program. You may not understand line number 9 and 10 as I have used some complex code over here. The code here converts our string inputs to plain integer values which will be used by the program to perform numerical addition. Please do compile the code here but run the same on your command prompt. Wish you all the best to complete this mission with full success. I have a final note to add to this topic what we have covered today. The command line arguments topic will not be used in any software application what we use in our daily life. To capture the inputs, we have fancy graphical user interfaces and the user will be expecting the same interface for us to show the output. The only reason I taught you command line arguments was you will get a hands-on grip in programming. Use these concepts to your best advantage and try to be creative in working more such examples. And that's enough for today. Relax well, code the two programs and get correct outputs. The next topic I teach you is control statements and it is very, very, very important for your entire programming career. So be ready. The answer key for the second program is present at the end of this video. Send us your doubts on WhatsApp if you have any so that we can solve it for you. Remember, you understanding the subject is our topmost priority. Subscribe to this channel to stay updated for our next video release. Till then, this is Balaji Kaya signing out. Always keep in mind, Muchkon Kodmadi.